Hey, why did the reader cross the roads of twilight? To get to the other side! <laughs> Where are you going? Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, that's right, we're talking about Crossroads of Twilight. We're finally there. You've heard about it, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> this is book 10 in the Wheel of Time and it is is the most notorious one. Um, pretty much everyone agrees. The, the worst Wheel of Time book. Uh, and really it's just because there's not a whole lot that happens. So why are we doing a spoiler discussion on Crossroads of Twilight? Because there's not a lot that happens, but there are still a few things to talk about. But this really is the epitome of, a, you know, it, it's, well, it's half setup book. I was going to say setup book. It's half setup book and half reaction book from the last one. So I commented, uh, when you're reading book nine, uh, it ends uh, with the cleansing, and you don't really see much of the fallout. There's not a lot of falling action. That's just, that's our climax, and then we just kind of go. So we get a lot of that falling action here. And it's done in a way so that it's not, doesn't feel necessarily like falling action, but it's still, you're getting a lot of people that are reacting to something that happened in the last book uh, instead of really moving forward doing anything else. And then otherwise, it's a lot of continuing plot lines and then setting stuff up for the next book. Perrin's still continuing to try to rescue Fahil. Matt's still continuing to try to get further away from Ibudar and the scene the Sean Chan. I'm correcting myself I still have to try it with some of these. Elaine is still, you know, working on getting the Lion Throne. And Rand is kind of just chilling after the cleansing. Um, and doesn't do a whole lot, although he starts to uh, try to get some sort of truce with the Shan Chan, so kind of doing something. Uh, and then Egwene is kind of continuing on with her plans uh, to retake the White Tower, uh, although we do do uh, end with her like getting caught, basically. So that's still kind of the the big thing at the end of this book, although it's not really all that big. There's are there's actually there's a scene that I thought happened in this book that doesn't. And it's just like, there was no reason you couldn't have thrown it in. Um, it, it's in the next book, and it's a good scene. But there's no reason you couldn't have thrown it in. It would have, would have been really cool. Uh, but it's, yeah, there's not, there's not a ton uh, that really happens in this one. Uh, the thing, though, uh, and what I always talk about, I call these the expansion books, is if you, if you look at it, if you break it down, about a third of this book is spent uh, in POVs from non-main characters. Now, some of them are slightly bigger side characters. Others are not. This book has a, a monster of a prologue. There's a lot of long prologues, but it's a monster of a prologue. And that takes up a big chunk. And the prologue, in a lot of ways, is really the most important part of this book because it's imparting a lot of information and showing us a lot of things we haven't gotten to see. But we also, uh, during the book as well, we, we spend literally, like I said, a third of the book uh, with some uh, side characters or some of them that are even new characters. Some notable things is we get uh, in the prologue, the introduction of Iturralde, who is one of the great captains uh, in a general, uh, as he is starting to try to plot how to basically defeat the Shan Chan and Taravon. And uh, we'll see more of him. But a uh, really interesting character and in setting up, and there's going to be a lot more with him too. Once again, fortunately, I have to say setting up. He's going to get a ton. But we also spend some time uh, with the Sean Chan and POVs, kind of seeing some plots taking place there and continuing to see that. I also do love the little nugget where um, the Sean Chan are thinking that Tom Marilyn is like this master spy sent by the White Tower, and he's the one who must have been uh, causing all the stuff there and, and kidnapping uh, Tuan and all that because they keep hearing about him, and so that's just kind of a fun little nugget. Uh, but So those are a couple of the, the notable things. But we spend some more time uh, as well uh, with one of the, the subplots that actually is one that I, um, I I forget how much I enjoy, but uh, we spend some time in the tower with the sisters who are searching for the Black Aja as well, which um, is some of my uh, my favorite Aes Sedai characters come from that group, which uh, I still remember reading the first time. I was not expecting that to be the case. Uh, so there's still, there are some good things going on, and we're really spending a lot more time exploring things, getting plots set up, introducing new things, and getting ready to really bring it all together. This is the, the book that really kind of gets the slowest, 
where really not a whole lot happens. We're just kind of, like I said, reacting to things that happen, continuing plots and getting ready to do some big stuff in the next book, which is obviously not the best way uh, to, to present a book. I think Jordan was trying to just have this be a bridge book. Uh, and, you know, it, it did work. It sets up a lot. And then the last four books really just kind of run for it. But it's it, it does do uh, some interesting things and just really expand out, show you more of the world, show you more what's going on with some of the smaller characters, uh, as well as just expanding and showing all of these different things instead of just focusing on the main characters. And while, yeah, this is, isn't the best book by any means, um, it, it's one of those things that may, has made the Wheel of Time for me so easy to dive into because you don't just spend time with your POV characters. And it's not like you just go to somebody for a page. Uh, so you do have some very short uh, POV sometimes kind of throughout as well uh, just to witness things. But it's also you actually get to learn about these other people. And uh, some of them end up being important, some not. But you just it's it's a glimpse into the world and to see everything else is going that's going on because while our main characters are very important not everything necessarily revolves around them and so kind of seeing all of these things take place it makes uh, some of the bigger events later even better it sets up some of them and just also gives you more of a background and a basis for why what's happening is happening that said it's still cross with the twilight like I said it's it's we all we all look at it as the weakest book and uh, rightly so great name. Uh, but not not a great book uh, overall. So I'm I'm really looking forward to Night of Dreams. And even after uh, doing this one, I, I I wonder if maybe audio has just made my patience a little bit better, or if it's just the fact that it's been a few years since it reread, and so things are a little bit more fresh. Because I I didn't really have any trouble uh, going through the the quote unquote slog, what I call the expansionist books. Uh, and normally I still enjoy them, but I, I my patience gets tried just a little bit. Uh, I didn't really have that as much this time. But like I said. Uh, this book is an important one, even though there's not a whole lot of actual plot happening here. Uh, getting all the little things, and I still enjoy those with the world building uh, as we continue on. And we do get a lot of that, and just little character nuances, small bits and pieces of information uh, that come back up later. Uh, but really, it's it's uh, the reason the reason we read this one is to get to the other side, because, man, Knife of Dreams is just one of my favorites. It's such a strong book. So many... So many great things happen in it, uh, and I'm, I'm quite excited to get to that as well. So I'm going to keep this one a little bit short, but that's Crossroads of Twilight, book 10, In the Wheel of Time. Uh, I know, I don't I don't know how many people are still uh, still with me here uh, <laughs> this far into the reread, uh, or first time read here, but um, it's been really fun doing a video like this for each of the books, so I'm going to keep doing it, uh, just if, for another reason, because I, I enjoy doing them. But uh, if you've made it this far, or, or you're watching this, just uh, have a sense, because you wanted to hear more about Crossroads of Twilight, for some reason. Uh <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description, as always, for the Wizard Leader a Discord if you want to chat books, whether this book, other books, any books, really anything at all. It is a lot of fun, and we'd love to have you. And, of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe.